Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you this power supply. What's cool about it is that you can adjust both the voltage and the current. The output voltage can be set anywhere from 3 volt to 20 volt and the current can be tuned from 0 amp up to 20 amp. It's really flexible and perfect for a variety of electronics projects. The adjustments are very easy to make thanks to two potentiometers, one for setting the voltage and the other for controlling the current. When the current reaches the set value, increasing the voltage will have no effect because the current has already reached its maximum preset level. On the other hand, if the actual current hasn't reached the set value yet, increasing the voltage can be done easily. This is the current regulation feature of the power supply, known as CC constant current and CV constant voltage mode. With the CC and CV functions, this power supply can easily charge batteries from 6 volt to 12 volt, as well as 1S, 2S, 3S, and 4S battery packs. When charging a 12 volt lead acid battery, the output voltage of the power supply should be set to 14.2 volt, which is the fully charged voltage for a lead acid battery. After connected the power supply to the battery, we will set the charging current. Typically, the charging current is one-tenth of the battery's capacity. For my 9 a battery, the charging current will be 0.9 amp. This current will gradually decrease as the battery approaches full charge. When the battery is fully charged, the charging current will be 0 amp and the battery voltage will match the preset voltage of 14.2 volt. I'll give you a detailed step-by-step -step guide, but first, let me introduce my partner and sponsor, JLCPCB. I'd like to thank JLCPCB for supporting this video. Over the years, I've used JLCPCB's 1 to 4 layer PCB in many projects, and they've always been reliable with fast turnaround. Now, JLCPCB is making high performance 6 layer PCB more accessible. With 6 layers, routing becomes cleaner and more efficient, increasing wiring density by around 30 to 50% so you spend less time dealing with routing limits and more time focusing on your design. With free via in pad technology and ENIC finish included, JLCPCB delivers professional grade six layer PCB without the professional grade price. If you want to try it yourself, you can get the latest coupon by clicking the link in the description below. The circuit operates in a half-bridge configuration with a driver transformer and the TL for 9 for IC is taken from an ATX power supply. I've attached the Gerber files, which you can download from the description section and upload to jlcpcb.com following my instructions. After uploading the Gerber files, you can easily preview the circuit in 3D format. The quality of PCB is excellent, the traces and drilled holes are precise, the surface is clean, and the copper layers are uniform, showing very high manufacturing standards. These are transformers taken from old computer power supplies, and all of them are still in good working condition. The PCB is designed to fit transformers that have a separate middle winding. Without this winding, the circuit won't function. Additionally, we'll need other components, such as the TL494 for for IC, 7500 IC, driver transformer, fuses, resistors, capacitors. And most of these components can also be salvaged from old computer power supplies. Since most of the components are used, we need to carefully test them to make sure everything is still in good working condition before assembling them onto the circuit.
I'm using an LRC meter to measure the inductance of the transformer coils. I've shared this circuit before, so you can check my previous video on the channel. This meter can measure both inductance and capacitance very accurately. In addition to showing the actual capacitance of the capacitors, this circuit can also measure their internal resistance. This is the circuit after installing all the components except for the main transformer, MOSFETs, transistors, and diodes. I'll now power it up and measure the voltage across the capacitors. I'm going to check the voltage across the two capacitors to see if there's any difference between them. The voltage across the two capacitors should not differ by more than 5 volt, which ensures stable circuit operation. Currently, the voltage difference is too large, so I'll replace one capacitor and check again. After replacing the pair of capacitors, the voltage across the two is now nearly equal. Next, we'll install the remaining components. Discharging the capacitors is essential to ensure our safety. The diode used here is an MBR2200 with a maximum current of 20 amp and a voltage of 200 volt. The transistors are 13,007 types, commonly used in computer power supplies. Make sure to insulate them properly from the heatsink. The MOSFETs are unchannel types, such as IRF3205 or IRFZ44, used to prevent reverse current from the battery. Finally, we'll need a power supply with an output voltage of 15 volt to power the control unit. I've finished showing you how to build a CC and CV adjustable power supply. I wish you all success. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below to share your thoughts or questions.